Okay, <clears throat> so we were working on thread, right? So basically there are methods that we need to discuss like weight, join, yield. So these three methods I'll cover tomorrow, okay? So today we will be discussing about a bit on synchronization and let's say <clears throat> we have multiple threads. multiple threads acting on a single object. For example, we have an object, right? And there are thread T1, there are thread T2. Like, uh, I think we have discussed this scenario, right? Uh, when I took example of bank, let's say there is a shared bank account or a joint bank account, right? And that is getting shared by more than one person. So for example, uh, there is person one, there is person two, there is person three. He is doing some ad, like he's depositing some money in the account. He is checking balance. And third person basically is there for withdrawal, right? <clears throat> so if they three come simultaneously at the same time, so what will happen? Like the initial balance was thousand, right? P1 is there for deposit, P2 is there for checking balance, P3 is for withdrawal, right? So. P3, let's say, want to deposit, uh, withdraw 5,000, for example. P1 wants to deposit 5,000. And P2 is there for checking the balance. So like when they are there in the system simultaneously, what, what we can have is inconsistent result. I'll show you with an example. Because if they are there in the system at the same time, let's say P2 got the chance, right? He will see the balance is 1000, but expected was 5000, sorry, 6000, because initially it was five. Now <coughs> P3 has entered and he want to withdraw 5000. What will happen? He'll see insufficient balance. So basically what should happen there, like these tasks should be executed in a proper sequence. Proper sequence means like at a time there can be only one thread acting on that bank object. Getting my point. So this is the problem we can have when we have multiple threads working on a single object. Now let me take one more example. Let's say you are booking a seat uh, into train, right? Let me call it so we have a class called reserve, right? In this, we have account seat available. Let me just take it available. Right. So right now available is one. T1 came to book a thread. Sorry, to book a seat. And it checks how many are there available? So it comes with the request wanted one, right? T2 is also coming with wanted one. Let's say now T1 came in, into the system and it checks if there is any available seat. Yes, there is. So do one thing, book that for me and just do available minus minus. Right, we have to decrement the count. So it will become zero basically, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> in between, while checking, let's say we are writing this, uh, some, some, something like this. If available, uh, 
is greater than or uh, equal to wanted and do available minus minus and between sleep sleep let's say for 500 milliseconds so basically why i'm putting a sleep here just just to simulate this problem this is basically for, for let's say when we are printing the ticket the time is going there printing to the ticket right so <clears throat> what will happen in that case like t1 came entered into this state or into this code we'll see available available is greater than equal to wanted yes go ahead and just do sleep for 500 millisecond when t1 was sleeping <coughs> t2 came with wanted one or let's say yeah uh, for this example we will be using one and it checks if available greater than wanted yes it is just go ahead and enter into this block and sleep for 5 500 millisecond just for printing the ticket and what will happen in this case like one ticket will be allocated to two thread or two person getting my point so that is incorrect yes or no yeah yes sir okay now let's do it on eclipse um, i'm just going to share my eclipse with you we'll be writing the code for this problem and then we will be writing the solution for it like how we can avoid such kind of scenarios okay So I'm going to create a class. Let me call it booking. Okay, or book ticket. Close all. In this package I'm creating a class called book ticket. Okay. and this is the class which will be implementing runnable interface right and if we implement runnable what we need to do is we need to overwrite run method okay that you guys know okay now let's assume uh, we have a variable called available here which is right now uh, one and int required right so these are the two instance variable we have this is basically for holding the uh, total count we have right now available and this is for the request like whenever a request will come for booking a ticket we'll see how many ticket a person wants to book or a thread wants to book okay now how we will be implementing this so let's say this is our thread we are using constructor here uh, it will take required like whenever we will be creating object of a thread what we will be doing is um, <clears throat> we will pass this number of ticket they want to book and will initialize it this dot required is equals to required okay so this is the constructor we have in this class now how we are writing this problem if <clears throat> if uh, okay before doing any process let me just uh, process uh, system dot out dot printer and available 
seats. the sprint available seats before entering into the <clears throat> booking system i'm saying available okay now i'm saying if available is greater than equal to required so just go inside and do one thing <clears throat> sleep for a moment so sleep uh, we haven't discussed in in detail but basic idea you guys have like when we say sleep a running thread will pause their execution for that moment like the duration we are going to pass so i'm saying thread dot sleep thread dot sleep i'm taking let me just take one second yes okay now we are sleeping for a moment right and when we say sleep it it throws interrupted exception so we need to handle this okay we'll discuss like what is this exception how when it can occur in tomorrow's session so we are basically sleeping for one second then what we are doing is we are saying <coughs> required number uh, required seat or uh, seats the the seat booked for and here we will be printing the name of the person for we have booked so basically we will be creating two thread that will be treated as a person here in this program so i am taking thread dot get current thread thread dot sorry current its current thread i am using and get name so we when we will create a thread we will name that thread like person one one person two okay <clears throat> so it will say like uh, number of seat like one seat booked for thread one or person one okay getting my point yes okay <clears throat> and else what we can do is um we can print sorry no seat available right Okay, so before doing this, what we can say is in, in your system, we are printing that information like seat booked for this and then we are basically printing the ticket. So this is duration is going into printing your ticket, let's say. Okay, so this is the program we have. This is a simple program, like there is nothing uh, complex. I believe you guys are getting it. If you guys have any doubt, let me know. Any doubt in this? Oh, uh, can you please? Uh, I have somewhat confused actually. <coughs> yes, um, tell me. If the available seats are greater than the required, then we are printing the th thread name, right? Just assume you have two thread. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. what these thread are basically, these are persons. So like you have to uh, booking counter on your bus stand or let's say on your railway station. And two guys are entering at the same time and trying to book their ticket. Okay. So for now, 
a person is a thread getting my point we will set this name don't be confused we have to demonstrate for which thread or for which person this is getting booked that's why i'm taking the name of the thread which basically executing this particular code this run method getting my point what is the confusion parvina i am not getting actually first it, it will check for the availability and uh, which person will get the seat that is printing right after that yeah yeah right right why it is uh, sleeping sleeping is basically you just you can say in your system it marks um see seat available is sorry so when a seat get booked what we can do is uh, we have to update available available is equals to available minus required right yeah we cannot uh, write that line in the middle of the if else right yes we can do that uh, it's inside if i'm just demonstrating simulating this problem let's assume <clears throat> the person who is taking your request at the counter checked there is a seat available and you pay for that and he is printing your ticket right and the same time there was another person at counter 2 and when that person who was sitting on counter 2 checked there was a seat available because the system has not yet marked that ticket into system okay getting my point now yeah yes anuj okay so <clears throat> what will happen in this case like this code this area basically will be accessed both the thread at the same time or like when t1 is sleeping or let's say printing the ticket so the other person will came and will access this area and the program will say like seat booked for person 1 Person two, so let us uh, do that. So we have a class called book ticket, and I'm I'm creating new one, um, a class which which will have main uh, booking demo. Okay, so in this class, what we will be doing is we will <coughs> create two object. Uh, for this thread basically t1 and t2 both will be acting on the same object like um, let me just create two object over here in the main method for thread so first of all what we need to do is we need to make an object of this booking class booking demo b1 is equals to new booking demo okay now if we want to make thread what we need to do is we need to pass this into thread constructor thread t1 is equals to New thread and I'm using B one here. Right hand thread T two is equals to new thread and this is also uh, working on B um, one. so when we say booking book ticket we haven't extend uh, sorry we have implemented runnable so what we are missing with what it says constructor booking demo um booking demo is undefined oh sorry 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 we have to create object of book ticket because booking demo is not a thread okay now when we are creating book ticket object what we need to do is we need to pass how many seat we want yes or no so we are saying like we want only one seat so now we have two thread t1 and t2 both want one seat now before running that let me just set the name 
t1.setName and I'm taking name as Ravina. Okay, and t2 dot set name, uh, which is basically I'm taking Ambika. All right, and then what we will be doing is we will say t1 dot start, and we'll say t2 dot start. Okay. Now if I run it, what will happen in this case? Just have a look. It is saying available seat one, seat one, one seat booked for Ambika and one seat booked for Praveena. And if I run it again, one seat booked for Praveena and one for Ambika, which is an incorrect. Like if there is only one seat, how it can be allocated to two person? Getting my point? Now what we need to do is, <clears throat> how we can, we can solve this problem, right? So here, basically the thing we are going to discuss, which is called synchronization, synchronization came into picture. Okay, now, so let me uh, just uh, demonstrate like what is the problem we are facing right now? and how we are going to overcome it. So for now, what we have is we have, we have an object, which is basically our book ticket object. You can see here, like both the thread using B1. That, that's why there is a problem, like if they took separate object, then there won't be any problem. But what if we have a common object or multiple threads acting or working on a single object, then what will happen? So that's the case we are discussing, right? So in this book ticket, there is a, availability of ticket one, right? One, one ticket is available over here. Now, when we say available greater than equals to required, so wh what is happening? This is your T1. It is coming here. It is checking if available is greater than required. So when T1 came, it came with a request of one. He want one seat. He want one seat. <coughs> Sorry. And the system says, okay. I have available seat. You can just go and book your ticket. It says one seat booked for, let's say Ambika or Praveena in our case, what, whoever came first and will allocate their seat to the prospective person. Then it will sleep for one second. At the same time, when this thread or this person was sleeping, T2 came with requested one and entered to this area. This area means this particular code we are working, right? And checks if there is an availability. <clears throat> yes, because it's still one, but ideally it should be zero. But we are sleeping right now, like the thread one which was come earlier, was sleeping, getting my point. So what will happen in this case, it will again say required seat booked for the second thread, getting my point. So this is the problem statement. So the area we are highlighting here, let me just um, wrap it up. Uh, just let me just erase it. Oh, where is pencil? Yeah, so this area is called critical section. <clears throat> Where we are doing um, the manipulation or basically uh, we are writing our logic. 
so the area where we are writing our logic let me uh, pick a definition like how we can uh, <clears throat> what should we call it um, let me just critical section <clears throat> yeah so critical section is a code segment where shared variable can be accessed so you can see here in this code these are shared variables available right and what we want is at a time only one thread can access these variables basically to update them so what we can do is we can come with a concept called synchronization <laughs> so in in this case what will happen like we we were discussing uh, there was an object there was an object uh, book ticket and the quantity or the availability was one t1 came and booked one ticket and same time t2 came and got a chance to execute this block right so we can do one thing like we can restrict this particular block executed only one thread at a time like when book ticket is uh, when t1 is working on this area t2 will wait when t1 will exit from this point t2 will enter getting my point so we can lock this particular area or a code for a particular moment like when a thread is working on this area other thread have to wait getting this okay now let me just do that so now <coughs> what we are going to use is synchronization so in in java there is a keyword called synchronized which we can use there right and this is called the one i am using here is called synchronize block and it it asks for an object like to whom you are concerned like for which object you want that particular lock so i am saying this particular object this means i am working on this object book ticket yes so i am saying like at a time this object can be accessed by one thread okay now what will happen if i run this program again <clears throat> you can say uh, one seat uh, booked for ambika and what we are getting is now sorry not no seat available even what we need to do is we need to you we need to keep this here so at a time only one thread will be there to access this particular block of code <coughs> getting my point guys yes sir so this is how we can avoid such kind of scenarios so synchronization is basically a process where a block of code can be accessed only one thread at a time right so when t1 came it will lock this object and will will not be able to another thread will not be execute to this particular block of code until a thread is in this area getting my point guys any doubt in this clear anuj okay and um, guys one more thing i would like to add like we haven't used printf uh, so far so what we can do is like <clears throat> we can use printf like we did in c language or c++ so for 
here you can see we we are taking two things one is a string here in in double quotes and second is the parameter i want to so so basically it's going to be a string thread dot get uh, current thread dot get name right so i want to say something like this sorry and the name of the person no seat available so i can say percent s so percent s basically pick the respective value from this area let me just run it again <coughs> getting my point any doubt in this guys this is a new concept like we should have discussed this earlier but i forget so i am saying like this so sorry will be printed as it is because it's it's in um, uh, double quotes now when we say percent s so percentage basically an specifier for printing an string okay printing a string or what we can do if we want to print a integer so let's say available seed equal to and i'm saying percent d so if you want to pick an integer value you can use percent d like this available and if i run it again so it will show us the count at the end like this which is basically zero right now getting my point uh, if there are multiple integer values which value it will take on it Ah, that's that's a good question. Let me just show you. So let's assume this code is not here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in oh, sorry, int i is equals to ten, comma j is equals to twenty. How many you want to take? Thirty. K is equals to let's say thirty. So we have these three values. Okay. let me take double as well double double x is equals to 10.53 okay and we have one string the string uh, a is equals to and so we have this data okay <clears throat> now what i'm saying is print this and i'm not going to use print ln okay so what we can do is we can say if you want to pick integer you can say percent d percent d percent d so we are basically having three integer so let me say uh, i comma j comma k so it, i first percent day will uh, it, uh, will pick value from i second will from j <coughs> and third from okay and let me just run it once and then i'll demonstrate one more thing so you can see we are getting 10 20 30 because we have two we have spaces added over here can you see now there won't be any space so i think you are getting this and you know we have slash t which is basically for tabbing i think you have an idea about it so it will uh, give eight character space between each okay so percent d is there okay now what i am saying is <clears throat> so these are basically the format space pair i am using here let's say i is equals to this i am saying j is equals to this and k is equals to this so this time this information will be printed as it is i is equals to 10 J is equal to twenty. K is equal to thirty. Okay. Now, if you want to print a string as well or double, <coughs> so what you will do? Let's say I want to print a value for x. So I'm taking x here, and for this, what we need to do is percent f. Okay. And let me use x is equal to this. Getting my point. any doubt in this you want to print the name as well let's say this is name
name is equals to percent s and if i run this like this like there are five um, format specifier i've used but count is four here in the uh, right side so what will happen error name exception missing format argument exception like we haven't mentioned percent s over here sorry percent s we have mentioned but the number of argument we haven't provided so name should be there right <coughs> and similarly if i remove this or any of the format specifier it will create a problem no it's not uh yeah so basically um but there might be one case uh, for example uh if i use wrong format specifier so basically for double what we need to do is we need to use percent f and i'm taking <coughs> i'm taking percent d so we are getting illegal format conversion exception right so let me just revert it and pravina i believe you you got it like what is all about so percent d this is basically mapped to this this percent d is mapped to this this one is mapped to this and this one is mapped to this and this percentage is mapped with this name make sense yeah here uh, we mentioned with the commas uh, after the semi uh, after the double yes course, right? yes we need to mention commas otherwise Maybe it will not work mandatory right yes it's mandatory like first thing there would be double comma and whatever you want to do in this right and there comma 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 and the values you are taking uh, <clears throat> one more scenario that uh, i would like to show you guys so if i just run it again so you will get the information as it is <laughs> so let's say we have a big value like 5 3 Four, three, three, four, something like this. Okay, and if I run it again, <clears throat> so this is the value we are getting, right? Five, three, four. So sometimes what you guys need is like two decimal. You just want this information for three, four, three. So for this, what we have is called. Uh, we can use point and then the number you want let let's say i want three places after the decimal so if i run it so you will see like we are getting three places okay and if i say um, i want two then it will give us two all right you say um, one you will get one okay Zero, I haven't tried. Let me just do that. I'm not sure about this one. Yeah. So basically, what we are getting is nothing. X is eleven. Ah, uh, when we say zero app, so it basically what what it is doing, it is rounding it up to the next nearest integer. Okay. And if I say minus one, then. not valid yes guys so uh, do you have any doubt in this yeah here you are mentioning with the commas and separating that in the previous example we didn't mention anywhere like this right in the thread example it's there you can see comma oh okay comma okay and okay. one interesting thing uh, let me just i want to print this information two time for example so you can see i'm getting the data in same line right because i am not using println so there might be a scenario where you want to print this information in next line so what you can do is you can add new line over here like this okay and doubt in this but what if i say in between like uh, this so it will 
print a new line and then we'll start doing your stuff. You can see there is one blank line, right? <clears throat> Getting my point, guys? <coughs> yes. Okay. So we have seen this. Um, let me show you one more, like which which, which we have. Slash so and we have seen slash so T. We have seen we have slash so R. Okay. So slash so R basically. One second. We how how we can demonstrate it. Mm, I'm not gonna use this. So this is the code we have right now. Let me just do some changes over here. So in this, what I'm saying is, uh, we just, we are just printing name, okay? So how it should look like, like in first line, we will have all the information and in second line, we will have name only, all right? <coughs> Getting now, if I say slash R, mm. no impact. Okay, and what if I say slash B? Yeah, so slash B is working. Yeah. So slash B is basically for backspace. If I say two time. But it is not as perfect like as in C++. If we do this in C++, plus plus what it does like you have this right and when we say slash bb it will remove or what it will do basically it will move your cursor to character back and when you start doing something again like printf so it will start writing from here from this point getting my point <clears throat> Uh, guys, tell me. Okay, clear, Anuj. Okay, clear. fine. So, so far we have discussed uh, um, creating a thread, how to set priority, how to set name, how to get current thread name, which is basically running right we have <laughs> discussed the scenario like when multiple threads are working on the same object then what could be the problem which can occur and how to overcome that okay 